Our fundamental goal is incorporating livestock into farming systems to the benefit of both the livestock enterprise and the farming enterprise. So this research takes place at the Fort Ellis Experiment Station uh, near Bozeman, Montana, and is associated with Montana State University, which is Montana's land-grant university. And its mission is teaching, research, and extension. What makes us unique is that we have a truly interdisciplinary team. Uh, we are approaching this per perspective not from purely the agronomy perspective and trying to see the yields or the soil science and trying to see the nutrient component of this, the, the, the soil, but we are looking at more of an, a holistic approach uh, where we try to combine uh, different components. I think there are very few institutions that have really um, grasp this idea of multidisciplinarity in the way we have done it. The organic market is really one of the fastest growing markets in the food industry in the United States. Since about the mid-1990s, organic food consumption has grown by 400 percent. Consumers are spending about 30 billion dollars on organic foods. That's projected to go to about 50 billion by about 2016, 2017. That's about 4% of the total food expenditures and, and food consumption in the United States. As a land-grant institution, it, the university plays an important part in really in improving the economy of the state. Uh, Montana is the third largest producer of organic crop and, and livestock in the United States. And the role of this project is really to understand how the organic food can be produced and brought to market in an efficient and cost-effective way. The public has, has an interest in organic systems as one type of sustainable farming, but what the public don't often realize is that, especially organic farming, has one major Achilles heel, and that is soil erosion, and that's related strictly to, uh, to tillage. And so this project is really uh, targeting that, that vulnerability or that weakness within organic systems. We've designed a system with a cover crop in it that lets us engage grazing in a way that would uh, reduce or eliminate tillage. In this five crop rotation, uh, we have cover crops. And so the question becomes with a cover crop is how do you terminate it? Because if you let it go through uh, maturity, set seed, we don't want that cover crop seed coming up in, in our case, the subsequent winter wheat field. So in our study, we sprayed it, and in our case, we had to spray twice. We used tillage. In that particular case, we had to till probably four times to kill the cover crop. And then on the grazing, we could actually use the sheep to graze. And then uh, the nice thing about the grazing was is we didn't have to do anything else. It was a perfect seed bed. So we had no tillage, no herbicide application. Sheep are the ideal grazing animal to be used in this sort of system. Not only are they smaller than cattle, so you can fit more of them in with fewer hoof impacts for compaction concerns, but sheep are also smaller and easier to transport and to get enough numbers out to those plots I think we're going to need that transportability when we take it to an actual crop production scale. When, when farmers think uh, they usually don't think in just one input and output they see the whole system. Yes they have the bottom line the economic as a major component of their decisions, but when they make decisions, they take into consideration the rainfall they may be receiving, the soil where they are farming, and the markets, uh, and the wheat pressure and the other pest pressures. Uh, so they make decisions based on the systems. And what we are doing now is we are doing a research that is at that level, at the system level. We're trying to, in a way, emulate uh, the pattern by which farmers make decisions by considering a whole set of variables at the same time. This project will really develop meaning and uh, you know, a greater sense of importance the, the longer it goes on because all of these different ecological cycles have got to they've got to adjust with, with time and so your weed communities are going to adjust, the soil uh, parameters are going to adjust and so we're, we're pretty early on in the project and so far we're having some early successes. I think the real challenge is that will lie ahead of us. As agricultural land starts to decrease and farmland gets smaller and smaller and 
cities start to encroach onto that agricultural land, I think we're going to have to find a way to combine cropping systems with livestock operations and find a way that that can benefit both types of producers. Uh, we are not proposing farmers to become ranchers or ranchers to become farmers, but we want to see if we can get an, kind of an entrepreneurial partnership between them and see what could be the benefits, economical benefits and environmental benefits and potential negative consequences of these approaches. Um, so we want to see, try to mix them and try to farm from these partnerships. Mm -hmm.